Uh, my name is Fernando Lopez. I work for Alamos Gold. Uh, Alamos Gold is a mining company, a gold mining company with operations uh, mainly in North America. My job uh, is very simple to describe, but like actually quite difficult to do. It is to manage all the exploration data for the company. So let's take a look at where we are. Uh, when I joined the company, we only had one operation in Mexico. It is called Mulatos. But now they come out through the years we've acquired and merged with other companies, and now we have three main operations. However, what we do, or what my team does, uh, is to manage the exploration data. And these are the location of our projects. The presentation I'm going to give you today it was already given in 2020 uh, as part of the MUG meeting right before PDAC. So if you were there, you probably already saw this. And today I'm going to show you two cases of um, how to use your uh, S3 dashboards. Anyways, let's go back to the presentation. If these are the projects. However, what I see, and I always tell people this, I, what I see is, uh, let's see, what I see is data. So every single of these projects, they produce data. Uh, whether they create new information, collect new data, or they purchase information. For example, a new geophysical data set. So to me and my team, what we see, in fact, is just these gigabytes and terabytes that are coming from sites. And our job is to make sure that everything gets properly managed. And when I say properly managed, I mean, I'm talking about the workflows, I'm talking about the storage of the data set. And finally, I'm talking about the distribution of data, which is also extremely important. Everyone should have live access to the information. I put together this slide a few years ago just to show how the information was uh, piling up for one of our projects. And although it is not related to one of the projects now, it just shows how the information goes up with time. The information never gets uh, stuck. It never uh, stops growing. We always receive more and more information. And it is not that you're not going to stop using the historical or legacy information. You also have to manage that. So the, this is like just to show you that information, it's always evolving. It's always growing. And you need to make sure that your, the system that you're managing is able to escalate and manage that new information that might be coming in two or three years. An example of what, it, what we manage. And by the way, this is a web map. This is an S3 web map. This is showing the uh, color information, the lithology information, and we also have access to all the information that it is required by site. A note here that the, all the information from the field is collected using collector. We included photos, lithology, structures, and so on, and the information flows through uh, our system and gets stored in the database or in the geo database. Another note here is that our core system is SQL. All the information, including the spatial data sets, they go into SQL. Now, but just to, to look at this into more detail, what we store in the GIS system is remote uh, uh, satellite images. For example, the, what, we look, what we're looking at right now is a 0 0.5 meter resolution worldview one, and we have several of these ones, which could be quite heavy. Uh, for anyone who's been managing or working with satellite images, you know that this is really, uh, this could be very large data sets. The second one that we manage is also your physics. As well, it could be legacy or new projects that come up with the new data sets and everything goes into the same system. We also have these, and I really like these, these maps. Uh, if, you can, if you pay attention to this slide, you will see that there are these two different colors here. The intense, color polygons, this one here, they are collected using collector. And the, the ones around are the interpretation made by the geologists in the office. So these two data sets, so these two layers, they go into the system as well. And they evolve, they grow. And by now, obviously, uh, we have way more data than before. Another thing that we manage, and this is a combination of non-spatial and spatial data set, is the colors. So every single color that the, uh, or every single drill hole that the company drills goes into the system. Uh, in this example, the black dots are uh, completed holes, the blue ones are planned, and the green ones are abandoned. 
but we were missing one data set. And, and I think we were missing it because it wasn't considered to be a geological data set. This is the drilling uh, reports or the, the, the ship reports. So that information was left on paper and sometimes were put in Excel, but everything was a manual process. So when we asked about this information, it was very difficult to get, to get an answer. It was very difficult to get a, a, a statistic of this data set. So two years ago, or maybe three years ago, we started working on this, on this project, how to capture this information and how to show it. Uh, for, I'm pretty sure everyone on this call has seen this before. I'm pretty sure everyone manages that information, the geological information very well. So you can, nowadays, you can just put together all your geology, your core photos, your assets, everything in one single place. But it hasn't been until recently that companies have started realizing that the drilling data set is actually quite important as well. And it is important because at the end of the day, that component is probably the one that takes more of your, most of your budget. So we needed to find a solution to track and monitor that information. Uh, okay, so we started with a simple question. And the question was, how much do we drill? And if you ask this question to two different, or if you ask this question in the past to two different people in the same project, you might have two different answers. And you might have two different answers because everything was in paper or everything was in Excel, or there was no workflow set up to manage this information. Okay, so we started with the requirements. And when it comes to requirements, there are two types of requirements. The first one is the user's requirements, and the second one is the data requirements. Let's just start with the first one, user requirements. So when you started asking people what they would like to see, they, the, the very first question was a very easy way to see the total uh, number of meters that we drill. So we call it the totals, something like that. The second one was they wanted to see what companies have been drilling in the property. And not only that, they wanted to see what machine was really on what property. So the example that you see on the slide right now show you uh, a very common um, contractor, really contractor, and the one on at the bottom will show you the different rigs owned by this contractor. So they wanted to see something like this. This actually came from my side. I wanted to see the behavior of uh, the drilling through the time. So we have monthly uh, graphics, like the one on the top, and then uh, daily graphics. Um, this helps me understand if, uh, or, or see if there is a gap in the information. And if there is a gap, it might be related to an issue. So we can identify those ones. We also wanted to see uh, the information is split by different satellite projects. And you can change the name here from a project to a prospect. So we wanted to see the information split by prospects. Um, and also the type of information, the type of drilling, it is whether BDH or RC. And this was a this was a very interesting one because people were uh, recorded the information of uh, mixed holes as just one single entity. But with this system that we put together, now we were able to split this information into DDH and RC and report it accordingly. And one more thing, what geologists always want is the spatial component. It doesn't matter how good your tables are, your reports, or your chart. They will always want to see a map. So we had to include this spatial component. And this is, again, similar to the one before. It was just a color map. So if we combine all of this, we came up with it. So this is what we were working towards. So a single interface that shows your map shows your totals, and shows any type of graphic that you or they require. So the data requirements, the data requirements to get to that point. The image here is showing you every single column that goes into the creation of that data uh, dashboard. So the, the columns in green are basically every single column that you pro you're probably already capturing. The ones in yellow and blue, those are calculated fields that we needed to create in the database to provide the information that we needed to create this dashboard. So for example, the ones in yellow, they only they are very simple. They only split information by type. So DH versus RC. And the ones on the right hand side, the, the blue ones, they, they, they split the drilling date into four different categories or four different columns to make it easier for you to create your graphics. 
We also put all of this information, every single of these columns into one single SQL view, because we also wanted to export the information if it was necessary. So the workflow, the workflow to create a dashboard, it, is, it involves more than just working with your software. It also involves going to site and doing, and doing these three things. The first one is the drilling part. Well, we don't do the drilling part, but that's done by the contractor. The next day, the driller report arrives at the office, has to be approved by someone, by the exploration manager or the project geologist. And then the next step is to get that information into the database. And here is where we really struggle to convince people to enter this information. So this is a change management problem. So you need to get the buy-in from uh, the exploration manager or the product or the director exploration or, or anyone high up in the organization that just tells uh, staff that this has to happen. Otherwise, it will never happen. Now, for example, every single day or most of the days, I will tell you an example later, most of the days we receive the drill reports, technicians enter the information to the database, and from that point onwards, our systems take over. The first system is an ETL system, SSIS, which is uh, SQL, basically. And that pushes the information or combines the information that you capture here with the colors and produces one single table, a spatial table with all the information. Minutes after this happened, this uh, second system um, takes over and publishes the information to RKS online, to our own site. And this is how we get the information from drilling into the cloud every 12 hours. So to, to build a dashboard is actually quite simple. Once you get to that point, your information is going to look like this. It's going to be one single entity into your RGIS online. It is called a feature layer, a hosted feature layer. Once you have it there, you can create the second one, which is a dashboard. This is the interface. And all you need to do is to connect this interface to this data set. Once you are there, all you need to do is to create all these different, uh, I think they are called widgets, and, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, creating these widgets is extremely simple. I, I usually tell this to people. Creating a, da a dashboard in Esri will take you less than a day. Preparing the information, preparing the workflows, convincing people, and answering all the questions that need to be answered can take you up to months. So it is not as simple as just opening the dashboard and start creating things. You need to, you need to change many things in the organization. So um, this is uh, our index map. So our geologists and users go to this map and just click on the, on the project they are interested in. So in this case, it is the one in Mexico. You go to the drilling link, and this is what they see. It is the dashboard, and again, this is refreshed every 12 hours. But this is not enough. Uh, they also wanted to see some type of filters, some type of sectioning in your database. And this could be achieved by using these filters. So you can create any filters that you want as long as they exist in your tables. Once you create the filters, you connect these filters to each of these widgets, and it will work. So for example, in this case, I'm just looking at February. What happened in February? We only drill in that area, uh, 19 holes, 1,400 meters, and then you can see it also by date. So why do I call this a data story? It is a data story because we've gone through a few different systems to get where we are. The first one, and again, I joined the company in 2014, I, this is what I found. People were still using paper. We we're still using these uh, documents to report the drilling. And as you can imagine, doing this manually, it's not only, uh, it not only takes time, but also it uh, creates confusion and can insert errors into the information. So this was the very first system that we had. The second one, and I'm pretty sure many people in this call don't like Excel, including myself. Uh, Excel came up with these uh, with these tools called pivot charts and pivot tables. So I actually went back to use Excel after I, I, I knew uh, that that functionality existed. So as long as your data is not stored in um, in Excel, you can connect Excel to your SQL database and still have a very uh, simple way to visualize information. But again, it wasn't enough. So the next system that we tried was Esri. 
I'm not sure if many people play with this, but as we had a previous version of the dashboard, it was called operations dashboard. And we also used it for, for a while, but we knew that a new version was coming, so we didn't really develop it much. The next tool that we used was uh, Power BI. This is a Power BI. And the only problem, well, I had only two problems with Power BI. The first one was that it wasn't part of our IT uh, software suite, meaning that we had to buy uh, all the licenses. And the second issue I had was that it doesn't, doesn't uh, work with UTM coordinates. So if you want to move the map, it has to be geographical, which is not a very difficult problem. You can just transform the information. But anyways, that's Power BI. And but we decided to just continue uh, building on our S3 technology. And now this is what we have. A very important thing about the dashboard is this, the date. Because many people go into the dashboard and they need to be aware of when was uh, about the last update date. Otherwise, they will be looking at uh, historic information. So why are we using our, uh, this S3 technology? Well, it fits our current technology. We're already using web maps. We're using RGS Pro. We're using Collector. We're using Survey123. It was very easy to integrate. So we didn't have to do any uh, much uh, data transformation. The second one, it provides global access. So it doesn't matter where you are. Uh, you can be on vacation in Hawaii or wherever. Go into the website, open your dashboard, and see information. And again, this information gets uh, uh, updated every 12 hours. And finally, the low cost. If you already have an RGIS Pro account, an RGIS online account, the dashboard is essentially free. Uh, the only thing you need to be uh, concerned about is the, the space that you need in your RGIS online account to store this. But again, it, it is not that expensive. I'm pretty sure Pete can speak about this. So what is next? Again, I, I made this presentation a year ago, and now we, we're already there. So what was next? So create more dashboards, essentially. And the second one that we wanted to work with was uh, we wanted to answer the questions, how many photos are we capturing every day at a, at a different sites? Since we only use one single uh, tool, which is called Imago, I'm pretty sure many people are using that tool to capture photos, we just needed to connect to that system and extract the information to show it in a simple way. And this is what we came up with. But to get to this point, you need two things. Oh, well, you need a couple of scripts. And it was, it was really good to see that uh, RGS Online came up with the not Jupyter Notebooks and also that you can actually schedule this to run uh, on demand. So for example, this is the very first script that we created. And this brings all the information into our account, into our RGS Online account. And the second one, it actually does a great QC. And this is how we get an, an error uh, account of the uh, of our data sets. So now we not only have one drilling dash, sorry, we not only have one dashboard, we actually have two dashboards using the te same technology, but configuring two completely different ways. The first one, all the information comes directly from SQL in, in, in our servers. And the second one, it actually comes from the cloud, from somewhere, someone else's uh, uh, system. And, um, and that, that's it. Essentially, that's it, Pete. So uh, if anyone has any questions or uh, now or later, I'll be more than happy to, uh, to answer.